Hey, what's up you guys? It's Allison. Today I'm going to be talking about this beach house that I modeled in Maya. It's been a couple months since I've actually worked on this. I finished it up for a, um, as a project and I only just now got the opportunity and time to really sit down and film my walkthrough of it, talking about what I did in the entire process and all that. So without any further ado, let's get started. So I really wanted to focus on making this um, setting really human and lived in looking. So I kind of just started with an idea of wanting to really work with um, an open concept kitchen, living room, dining room area. And I did this by modeling it after some Pinterest boards that I found and other kind of just photography like in country homes or country living and beach living, magazines like that. And then I kind of just added little personal touches from other models that I did. Um, hopefully by this time I will have already uploaded my office Maya model. It's actually trash in the trash can. I'm really proud of that. <laughs> okay, so I started off with just kind of the stools, actually. Let's focus on that. It's been a while, I for Ooh, kind of forgot what all the um, hotkeys and stuff are, but okay. So I started off with this kitchen island here, and then I went to the stools and did the L counter. And I wanted to get really in-depth with this, so um, I ended up working with dynamics, as you can see, like with um, this blanket here and these pillows, and um, I even worked with it a little bit on this tissue box, just so that way I could get... Um, more of a authentic looking tissue. <laughs> but dynamics I found aren't nearly as hard as I thought they'd be. I found a couple really good um, tutorials on YouTube. I'll probably put this in the description just to kind of help those of you out who don't have a teacher um, showing you how to do the hotkeys and things like that. Um, this, I stole a couple of assets that I made for my um, other Maya model, my first Maya model, where I modeled an entire office space of um, Jim and Karen. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to upload that before I upload this, but you know, I actually, I think I filmed that video back in January and I never actually uploaded it. But um, I worked a lot with nerves and revolving surf surfaces here. Like if you look here, I'll open up in my outliner, let's see, it's on the desk, it's pen holder. See, it's actually a revolved surface, um, although, yeah, you can just see it's really in nerves. Um, but, oops, I did a thing. Oops, da, da, da. Okay. So, yeah, it's been really fun working with this model. I worked a lot with blends and trying to get everything just how I wanted it. And I also put in a lot, as you can see, this kid is playing Skyrim. Love that game, honestly. That'd be me in this house, just playing Skyrim. Like, oh, there's a wonderful beach, and look at, we have such nice neighbors, but look, I'm just going to sit here on my computer playing Skyrim. Um, and then I wanted to also personalize it. I found some stock images that were, like, royalty-free, and I put them in for um, family photos. I have a little dog, his dog bed. Oops. I keep on forgetting how fast the tracking speed is on this mouse. Um, also, this is a grouped object right here. Like, if you look in lights and lamp, like, this is a whole bunch. Like, got a nerve sphere, got a bulb surface, it's a lot. Um, I think, overall, this entire area was, I want to say 60 to, 80s hour, 60 to 80 hours of modeling. And I really minimized the time. Like, it normally, oh my goodness. I really minimize my amount of work. Oh my goodness, what did I do? Um, because this is an exact copy of those two over there, so I don't know what happened. That's fun. Okay, we're just gonna chalk that up to me downloading it and unzipping my files so that way I could film this on this computer. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, I put in a lot of effort. I put in a lot of effort into this piece, but I minimized the amount of work that I had to do simply by copy and pasting a lot of assets from my previous model and 
well, it didn't work here, but you can see it didn't work here, but it worked for the rest of these chem- Oh no, oh no, I- oh, that was bad. Oh no. Oh well. <laughs> um, but you can see I minimized the amount of workload that I had purely by copy and pasting assets that I had- I need to stop clicking things, oh no. Okay, I just can't click anything in this model right now because it's being really buggy on this computer. Um, Maya's actually already crashed once while I was trying to film this, and I just can't touch anything. I Maybe it's just nerve surfaces? Oh no. Yep, it's just nerve surfaces. Let's try... Yeah, it's fine with geometric and polygons, but I just can't touch any nerve surfaces right now. Um, but yeah, I... You can see this couch actually gave me a lot of trouble as well because, um, it looks fine now, but... It's because it's a grouping rather than a full seating area sofa. Like, it's a whole bunch. Got my pillow right there. Like, I had to use dynamics on the pillows. I used dynamics on the cushions a little bit just to get them that, to sink in a little bit. Um, and, yeah, you can still see there. There are little gaps and things in. I don't know what that was. Um, you can still see little gaps and things in the modeling itself, but I'm still really happy with how it ended up because um, there was, when I first started modeling this couch, I had a, a an issue with my mesh. So there was a vertex right here that I had deleted about six times, and it connected to a vertex over here. And this is like a um, couch that I used by, let's see, I believe, I can't remember the shortcut right now, but essentially I took one surface and I took the um, the intersection of the two pieces rather than going in and like messing with vertexes because I didn't want it to glitch out and have a little web of vertex mesh right here. Um, but I ended up like for bigger more complex things like this I think you're probably just you just have a safer bet if you do a large group of objects. Like for me like this, these were just four little pegs that I copied and pasted from, um, no, I didn't copy and paste them. I actually took a, um, let's see, yeah, I took a cylinder. Did I just, I made a cylinder. Great. <laughs> I made a cylinder and then I, um, shrunk down the base so it was like this and I shrunk it down to like, I think a quarter of the size. Or maybe it was just half. Continuing on, um, this is kind of different from how I modeled these two uh, little seats over here because instead of, like, ooh, let's just glitch out the floor a little bit, it'll be fine. Because um, you can see that these are very sharp and much better modeled, it's much cleaner than how I modeled these. Like, you can see the paint. I'm very selective with how I paint my models, um, but some things you just can't avoid. Like in Maya, um, no, in Mudbox, you can really get extremely selective and fine with how you s paint your objects, but in here, it's you select by um, the mesh. And, <laughs> oh my gosh, I, goodness, I love this. Um, I actually have a, I think this was just a generic, oh no, it was ABC Chinese restaurant, okay. Um, I don't think we have any of those around here, but you know. And then Time Magazine, I just wanted to kind of personalize it. Tell you what was a pain though was ooh, oh no glitching love this this is great um was all of these DVDs uh, let's focus on it okay and we're gonna yeah there we go deselecting was trying to get them to fall in a way and let me just say I had a huge problem with dynamics in here like this took me forever to get correct because I had the issue of the infinitely falling blanket like it started I started it up here so I could get a lot of wrinkles down here and I it ended up falling straight through the floor and I think it was about 2,000 feet down before I was finally able to delete it um <laughs> but the dynamics I learned a lot from the dynamics of that blanket that I was just so determined to have in my setup because I thought it would add a lot which I think it does because it kind of shows like Oh, maybe it was the little girl, like, over there or something. She had her own little blanket, and she had a good time. Okay, so, okay. Yep, I was right. It is just the nerves that are, okay. It's nerve surfaces. So just don't touch them if you're unzipping files. It's okay. I'll just delete this um, rendition, save. 
of it because I did actually have to, um, in order to make it much less irritating to go and navigate and fly through, I had to uh, <laughs> just go in and take out the lighting fixtures that I had because I this um, I did lighting renders using Arnold and. It was a bit of a pain. It ended up looking really nice, if I say so myself. I had a lot of help from um, my mentor who really helped me understand how the lighting system Arnold works. Um, I added in a lot of little details to try and make the space more lived in. Um, like the plates, obviously, the sponge, the little apples, the coffee maker. Hey, look, it's full over there. Oh, and, and focusing on it. And see, you can even see like oh look it's the little funnel part or oh my goodness the handle's a different color and oh this was such a pain okay i'm gonna zoom out and then select something nothing okay and there we go because you see this was a pain trying to get this to ha come in in a way that it would um don't mind the air conditioning unit um <laughs> but trying to get little details like this that you really can't tell once you back up except for those um but the little details are what I really want to focus on in on because sometimes they can make the entire difference. Like here I went in and I laboriously went in selecting every little part of this mesh in order to just color it a different color. And then, oh, I love this. In this house we don't do mistakes, we do, I'm sorry, we do fun, we do silly, we do forgiveness, <laughs> oh my goodness. I found that online and it was so cute, so I recreated it, or I can't remember, no, maybe, no, I think that I did just grab that offline, um, but it was on a royalty-free website, so I should be fine. And then Netflix. Because, you know, I don't know, I thought it would be cute. And, I don't know, my brain at like, I think about 10.30, 10.45 at night, I was just sick of looking at infinite gray. Just like, it was very bleak and working in um, on my computer so late at night. So I just put in this giant image. Um, fun thing about this is this model in Maya is probably what helped me to really understand, not understand, but realize that what I loved out of video game design and what I want to do with that field um, is really like that one little tiny part of video games is the entirety of architecture. Like, let's see, I'm just gonna, oh no, oh there it is, yeah, like here. You can see from here that, like this was one of my favorite views to just go in and see like, oh, this is what's going on. Although, um, oh shoot, I forgot you can't revolve at all, but, um, yeah, like this was just fascinating to me when I could look down on the entirety of my piece, and we're going to go back to perspective view because I know how to navigate that better, but yeah, this model really helped me to understand that what I want to do is more so architecture based and interior designing because it's it'd be a bit easier in a different software like in um my friend recommended this piece of software to me it's like live house 3d or something anyways you can use it on ios android um pc mac etc it's a very versatile software and i'm really looking forward to working with it hopefully i'll be able to do a couple of run throughs um man this might become an architecture channel maybe um but yeah I'm sorry, I just really love these, the trash, in the trash can, because my teacher saw it one time, or my mentor saw it, and he was like, what is, what's that? And I was like, trash in the trash can, and I was just so tired because I would worked on it. And he was like, that's very convincing trash. <laughs> and it was fun. Um, I had a lot of trouble going through and doing little, smaller details that were bigger objects, like the lights now. Um, but I don't know, I really love this view. It's just like, oh, oh that's so nice. Um, but the curtains, they were such a pain. I ended up using a very simplistic tutorial that I found here on YouTube. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. But um, yeah, I actually ended up just moving a plane around and that's how I got these textures. So yeah, this is just my 
Maya model and thank you for watching. I'll put any of the um, tutorials that I, all the tutorials I can find um, that I used in the description down below. And thank you for watching my video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I hope you have a great day.